everyone, it's Mwelwa on the sidelines of the EU in Zambia Business Forum. Today, I'm having a nice conversation with one of our old friends, Mr. Mabin Modenda, who is one of the key delegates at this year's event. Mr. Mabin, how are you doing? Well, I'm fine, Mwelwa. Thank you for having me on your show again. It's always a pleasure to have you. And this time around, we're talking EU. But then, before we get into that, uh, you know, most recently you announced a very, very significant announcement uh, around Seneca. Are you able to tell us about uh, this joint venture that you've entered into? Yes. Uh, so Seneca is um, a commodity trading company registered in Zambia. Then we partnered with a company called DDSC Logistics out of South Africa, uh, Cape Town to be precise. Um, they do a lot of haulage, and they had a trade desk in, in Cape Town for minerals, commodity trading, and uh, uh, food commodity trading as well. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we got together and decided, look, we, we, we want to grow into, into Africa, and then that's how we ended up uh, uh, partnering and doing a joint venture. Hence the name Seneca DSC Logistics. Mm, okay. um, and also the same week actually after the joint venture, after launching the, the joint venture in Cape Town, we partnered with DHL Road Freight Africa. Mm. Uh, that venture, that uh, joint venture actually partnered with DHL as well. Wow, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Mr. Maven, you know, you're talking joint venture after joint venture. Today, curiously enough, you know, our president, Haka uh, Hishilama, uh, actually talked about the importance of JVs uh, to delegates uh, at uh, this EU business forum. Tell us why, you know, you're participating in this particular, uh, you know, um, you know uh, 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 forum, and what sort of benefits do you hope to uh, achieve uh, by participating? Actually, I, I do uh, commend the president for... Uh, what he's done in the last two years. Uh, today I was actually surprised that uh, um, uh, they're actually doing uh, all those things within the Copper Belt. Um, right. On Friday they, <clears throat> they launched the, the uh, Sharp 28 in Wansha. Mm -hmm. uh, today they launched the solar, uh, solar ECEC solar project. Um, but, but back to your question, uh, joint ventures really, I think, are the way forward. Uh, uh, it's not it's not every time really that you'd actually do something by yourself and win. Joint ventures will always win because even for example, my joint venture, our joint venture with uh, DSC, has has actually brought more work to Seneca Zambia. Mm -hmm. um, just in the last two days, because of the joint venture, because of the other brand being known in the international circles, Seneca ended up getting uh, fertil uh, fertilizer transport contracts. Wow. You know, wow. uh, so. Anything you do in terms of working with others will always, will always bring you uh, premium. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, there's been a lot of topical issues that uh, were discussed out of uh, the early morning uh, uh, event. But one of the things that, uh, that stood out uh, for me personally was, you know, the importance of, uh, you know, working together and full participation. Now, obviously, your, you know, your businesses are also in the, in the haulage, uh, you know, in the haulage, especially around the mining uh, value chain. Um, are you having conversations now at this particular event that uh, indicate that there could be potential if, you know, the EU aggressively, uh, you know, partners with Zambian companies? Yes, there could be a, a big potential. Uh, for example, if today uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, EU member uh, uh, companies decides to, to, to venture with Kalongwa Mine in Northwestern Province or Krukni Group, in northwestern province, on one of the on, on the on the on the smelter facility, mm -hmm. uh, well, we would be happy to also come in and do the transportation of the of the carpet into mm -hmm. Durban or into into Beira. I mean, what we target is where the copper is going. Right. Uh, what we target is what's coming into the what's coming into the mines. Mm -hmm. Your sulfur, they need sulfur to make to do the processing of copper, mm -hmm. and that's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, Zambia for the longest time, we've been exporting raw material, mm -hmm. you know. It's Congo, they don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Congo, you can't even buy uh, copper concentrate from Congo anymore. Wow. Because you have to, you, you have to, it has to, it has to go through the, it has to go through the, what do you call it, uh, their processes to, to, for you to export it. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a f finished product. Exactly. Before it goes out. 
Right, right. Which, I mean, which, if the finished product has to go out. Exactly. So you can't take it. You can't take the raw material out. Right, right. So it's, it, it, this obviously touches on the issue of benefits, beneficiation. Now, for you, for like your group of companies, what does beneficiation mean, you know, for you? And are you seeing more opportunities coming up, especially when you have ore that is processed all the way up to, you know, finished products? Yes, I mean, it, it, it's a benefit for me if if, if we do get. Um, uh, for example, if we are moving uh, finished products, because then that way even the risk is less. Mm. Uh, we just get the metals and the metals straight into a ship. We don't have to go and get into Durban, uh, 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 then trans trans ship and put into bags, mm. and then have to take it out. It's another job, you know. But this way, we it's, we, it's, a, it's beneficial for us as well. Absolutely. And then one final question. Um, you know, obviously you've had some interesting conversations at this particular event. Uh, you're the networking man, as I like to call you. Uh, are you able to give us some insight on some of, some of the conversations that you had and how you feel about them going forward? Yes. Uh, the only thing, I, I, you know, we, we spend time talking to these, uh, these people, the European Union, the investors we call them. I think they need to open up more. It's exactly what the president said. I think most Zambian, uh, most Zambian, even most of the young Zambians that I know suffer most of the time with uh, finance, mm -hmm. but they would want to, they would want to partner with people, but usually we get, they, we always get this response, ah, no, okay, we'll do it ourselves, mm -hmm. we can't do, this is the time now that I think the government must put in that actual law, like mm -hmm. Congo, there is no way uh, uh, Msonda would give Frank, uh, a company for nothing. Frank will have to come into Congo and make sure he gives his 50% mm -hmm. to a Zambian. Right. right. And that way, the, the government will support, will support the Zambians. Even if they don't have the money, I know it's always a question of uh, equity, mm -hmm. but there's always a way of working out that equity uh, transaction. I mean, I've been in transactions where I have 10, 5% of a huge business, but I never put in money. Mm -hmm. It was because I, I had to be there as a Zambia, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But it benefited me in, a, in, a, in, in, in my own way, it, benefit, it, it benefited me that 5%. Five, five mm -hmm. And even that 5% can still work for the next, for the, for the next Zambia. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Maiman, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Uh, and, and we wish you well for the rest of uh, you know, the event. Thank you so much. There you've heard it for yourself, you know, Mr. Maiman Denda a proud Zambian, running Zambian businesses that are partnering up with other entities from across Africa and Europe and America. So stay tuned for more insights from Financial Insight and get to know.